to love and serve him as his dear children. <coughs> but we have disobeyed him and deserve only his wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us confess our sins to him and plead for his mercy. Merciful Father in heaven, I am altogether sinful from birth. In countless ways I have sinned against you and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Cleanse me from my sin and take away my guilt. God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven all your sins by the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ he has removed your guilt forever you are his own dear child may God give you strength to live according to his will amen, amen. let us pray the father of lights every good and perfect gift comes from you inspire us to think those things that are true and long for those things that are good, that we may always make our petitions according to your gracious will. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Congregation of Jesus. Our first scripture <coughs> lesson for today is taken from the book of Deuteronomy in chapter 11, beginning with the first verse. Love the Lord your God, and keep his requirements, his decrees, his laws, and his commands always. Remember today that your children were not the ones who saw and experience the discipline of the Lord your God. His majesty, his mighty hand, his outstretched arm, the signs he performed, and the things he did in the heart of Egypt, both to Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and to his whole country. What he did to the Egyptian army, to its horses and chariots, how he overwhelmed them with the waters of the Red Sea, as they were pursuing you, and how the Lord brought lasting ruin on them. It was not your children who saw what he did for you in the wilderness until you arrived at this place, and what he did to Dathan and Abiram, sons of Eliah the Reubenite, when the earth opened its mouth right in the middle of all Israel and swallowed them up with their households, their tents, and every living thing that belonged to them. But it was your own eyes that saw all these great things the Lord has done. Be careful, or you will be enticed to turn away and to worship other gods and bow down to them. Then the Lord's anger will burn against you, and he will shut up the heavens so that it will not rain and the ground will yield no produce. And you will soon perish from the good land the Lord is giving you. Fix these words of mine in your hearts and minds. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Teach them to your children, talking about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road when you lie down and when you get up. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates, so that your days and the days of your children may be many in the land the Lord swore to give your ancestors, as many as the days that the heavens are above the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Now we continue with the responsive reading of our psalm for the day, Psalm 66. Shout with joy to God, all the earth. Praise the Lord, every Make his praise glorious. Praise our 
our God, O people. Let the sound of his praise be heard. He has preserved our lives. And never our feet from slipping. Come and listen, all you who fear God. Let me tell you what he has done for me. If I had cherished sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But God has surely listened. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and it will be forever. Amen. Our second lesson for today is from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians in chapter 2, beginning with the first verse. <clears throat> and so it was with me, brothers and sisters, when I came to you, I did not come with eloquence or human wisdom as I proclaim to you the testimony about God. For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. I came to you in weakness, with great fear and trembling. My message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power, so that your faith might not rest on human wisdom, but on God's power. We do, however, speak a message of wisdom among the mature, but not the wisdom of this age, or of the rulers of this age, who are coming to nothing. No, we declare God's wisdom, a mystery, that has been hidden, and that God destined for our glory before time began. None of the rulers of this age understood it, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. However, as it is written, what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, and what no human mind has conceived, the things God has prepared for those who love Him. These are the things God has revealed to us by His Spirit. The Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. To sins, the word of the Lord. We continue with the verse of the day. Alleluia, alleluia. Christ is risen, He's risen indeed. Alleluia. If anyone loves me, he will obey my teaching. My Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Alleluia. Alleluia. Please rise for the reading of the Gospel. <coughs> the Holy Gospel for today is in the Gospel of Matthew, in chapter 7, beginning with verse 24. Therefore, Everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord. The congregation may be seated. We continue with our next hymn, hymn 563, <coughs> My Hope is Built on Nothing Less.
They remain firmly rooted in God and His Word, watered by God's grace. Then their faith, their faith, our faith, will not wither. And that's God's promise to us. What will these compromises become? Again, I don't know. But again, of this much, I am sure. I'm sure that in a world where increasingly you see more and more utility poles standing around, they will remain trees, God's trees, green trees full of leaves and bearing fruit as they remain in God's work. That's what our gracious God has promised.
my favorite meal. A good meal can be so much and stand for so much. After a hard day at school or a nice dinner, it can be a time where you're relaxed and reflect on the day. A meal can be a way you celebrate the good times in life, for example, a birthday, a new job, winning a hockey game, and overall, a time for family and friends to gather. A meal is usually a meal to protein, foods, grains, and vegetables. But sometimes in a hurry, a meal can just be a quick sandwich or my favorite, a dish of ice cream. On occasion, we even enjoy a meal throughout the year at church. When our desserts are the best part, regardless of the meal or reason for the meal, we should all give thanks to the Lord for the generous meal He has provided. There is one meal that is far more important than the meals we eat daily to provide our body nutrients. One might call it the favorite meal. This meal is Lord's Supper. The Lord's Supper does more than provide bodily nutrients. It symbolizes so much more than being for our spiritual needs. Like any meal, there is preparation that is required for it. the Lord's Supper it is properly to receive the Holy Communion. We as Christians need to examine ourselves and fully believe the words that are being spoken. For whoever does not believe these words or doubts, then is not prepared. On Monday, Thursday, the Lord took his disciples. He then instituted the Lord's Supper. He provided them with the body and blood of Christ and spoke the words, Take me, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for, the, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. From there, Jesus went on to pay the ultimate sacrifice. He was crucified on the cross on Good Friday. Three days later, he rose again and is seated at the right hand of God our Father in heaven. Through this sacrifice, our sins are forgiven. We use the Lord's Supper to remember what Jesus did for us. We also use this meal as a time to repent to him for all of our sins. During the, this meal, with the wine and bread, we receive the Lord's true body and blood that was shed for us for the forgiveness of sins. Therefore, not only is our favorite meal, but this meal is what provides us the everlasting love in Jesus Christ. The forgiveness of sins and the eternal life in heaven with our Lord and Savior. The Lord's Supper helps us to celebrate Jesus Christ as our Savior who forgives our sins, and to remember our Lord's death and resurrection, and to look for His glorious return in the future. Holy Communion also strengthens our faith in Jesus and keeps our faith alive until the Lord takes us to heaven. The reason we want to receive the Lord's Supper often is to be reminded of what Jesus did for us, and that our sins may be forgiven so that we can live in peace with one another. While I have not received the Lord's Supper for the first time, my strategies and instructions have been looking forward to the meal we will all receive together the opportunity to repent from our sins. Let us now join in confessing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by God the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us rise for prayer. We'll make use of the responsive prayer of the church. Let us pray to God for all knowledge and wisdom that the church may be renewed and strengthened for her mission. O Lord, you have revealed your good and gracious will to your people on earth. Forgive us for pursuing that knowledge that serves only our selfish desires and for using what we have learned to exploit and hurt others. Cleanse our guilty hearts of the apathy we feel for searching out the deeper truths of your work. Holy Spirit, hear our prayer that we may put self aside and rejoice in the truth that builds up. <coughs> Heavenly Father, send the Spirit of Jesus into our hearts 
so that like the Bereans of old, we eagerly learn of you. As the deer pants for streams of water, may we be instilled with a longing to explore the mysteries of your grace. As you send your Son among us, as the Word made flesh, so bless efforts of schools, colleges, and seminaries to train those who proclaim your presence among us in word and sacrament. Holy Spirit, instill in us the desire to teach others the wisdom of your ways. O God of light, give to the church renewed wisdom and fresh understanding that the message of your salvation may shine ever brighter in this dark age. Holy Spirit, kindle in us the fire of our love, so that others may see our good deeds and praise our Father in heaven. <clears throat> Lead our confirmants to treasure your gospel, the good news of forgiveness for their sins, and relief for their guilt. Protect them from Satan when he tempts them to be careless with your word and sacrament. Give our compromise power through your gospel so that they live in their world with kindness, humility, and patience. Help the adults in their lives to provide fitting examples of faithfulness to your word and sacraments. Lead us all to encourage and guide them in wisdom and love. Hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private petitions. We'll also include in our prayers this morning a Prayer on behalf of all mothers on this Mother's Day. We'll also include in our prayers a prayer on behalf of our brother in Christ, Chuck Landeck, who is hospitalized. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for the gift of life that you granted us through our mothers. We also thank you for the time and love they have given us during our lives. Bless mothers everywhere with love, patience, understanding, and strength to carry out their special work. And lead children everywhere to be thankful for their mothers. Keep families everywhere faithful to your word. We pray this in Jesus' name. O compassionate Father, in your mercy you transform even sickness and affliction into blessings for your children. With this confidence, we commit all who are sick and suffering to your tender care. And we especially pray for our brother in Christ, Chuck Landa. Provide healing and relief according to your infinite wisdom and boundless mercy. Grant patient endurance if his suffering must linger and help him find true spiritual strength through Jesus and his cross during this time of physical weakness. By the work of the Holy Spirit, teach him to trust in your forgiveness, grace, and love. We ask this in Jesus' name. Now, Holy Spirit, Renew the face of the earth, so that the name of Jesus, at the name of Jesus, every knee may bow. May your peace, which transcends all understanding, guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. <coughs> Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever.
congregation may be seated. We continue with our next hymn, hymn 640, God's Word is Our Great Hymn. Thank you. 